he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Voices from the Loft. Hi, welcome to Voices from the Loft. This is Pastor Joel, Joel Davis. The Loft is a Wesleyan church located in Hillsboro, New Jersey. And we do Voices from the Loft for every Wednesday evening. And we rotate through a list of folks from the church. And um, tonight, I'm going to speak to you about Lent and Ash Wednesday. Today is Ash Wednesday, which is traditionally the beginning of Lent, the Lenten season. And many of us see that as a run-up to Easter, and Lent does end with Easter. Although, strictly speaking, Lent has nothing to do with Easter, uh, other than by, you know, there's a very logical and emotional connection, which is kind of why it happens. But Lent is actually a memorial of Jesus 40 days in, in the desert just at the beginning of his ministry, when he went out into the desert uh, to be tested by Satan. And that's when the famous uh, three temptations happen, jump off the roof of the temple and turn the stones into bread, and so on. And that was also the period of time after which uh, scripture tells us that Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit and sent out for his ministry. Now, interestingly enough, Lent connects to Easter, which is the end of his ministry, the fulfillment, the consummation of his ministry. So there's a very obvious logical bridge there. I remember hearing a Catholic theologian who was once trying to explain the juxtaposition of Lent with Easter and going into this uh, narrative that it really isn't literally connected. But his explanation was there are only so many days on the calendar, uh, which has something to do with it. If you're going to acknowledge Jesus 40 days in the wilderness, uh, those 40 days are going to be next to something else, no matter what you do. But of course, there's a logical connection there because uh, Lent is seen as a time of fasting. It's, it's a time of reflection. It's a time of self-denial in many respects, the whole idea of giving something up for Lent, which really prepares us for the glory of the fulfillment of the gospel, which is Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection, which we're all acknowledged on Easter. And today is called Ash Wednesday. It's the beginning of Lent. It's the beginning of this Lenten season. And just about everybody knows what Ash Wednesday is, but uh, what is Ash Wednesday and where did it come from? And it really is, Ash Wednesday is actually connected to Lent. It is the first day of Lent. And it is acknowledged by this ceremony of putting ashes, usually putting ashes on the forehead and uh, to acknowledge Ash Wednesday. And it is a ceremony. Uh, it's not biblical. There isn't a, an 11th commandment that says honor Ash Wednesday. But ceremonies are, are important. I've noted this myself quite often when doing weddings in particular. Some folks will just dismiss a wedding and say, oh, it's just a ceremony, it's just a piece of paper, it doesn't matter. But really, in general, we use ceremony to acknowledge important events, graduations, weddings, uh, the commissioning of public servants. Because the event is important, there's a ceremony attached to it. The ceremony helps us to acknowledge the importance of the event, hence weddings. Marriage is very, very important. And the ceremony associated with marriage really is just meant to acknowledge the importance of the event. 
And I will point out to you, so uh, those who perhaps say marriage doesn't matter, it's just a ceremony, it's only a piece of paper, what they're really acknowledging is that they don't think marriage is very important. And so Ash Wednesday is a ceremony, but it's meant to mark the importance of entering into the Lenten season. Uh, the ashes are meant to remind us, and we know in the Old Testament there's talk of sackcloth and ashes. Ashes were associated with mourning. And uh, Lent is associated with repentance. We're also reminded of our own mortality. The reason ashes are used uh, back in the Garden of Eden when Adam fell and the Lord said to him, uh, from ashes you were made and to ashes you will return. Uh, and the ashes remind us of our mortality, which isn't always the most pleasant meditation, but it's, it's a real thing. Uh, we may live for decades on this planet, but way too often uh, lives end suddenly without warning uh, through all kinds of things. And it's helpful to remember our mortality because the gift of eternal life that is given to us through Jesus Christ uh, is such a joyous and, and amazing reality that remembering our mortal shroud, if you want to call it that, uh, helps us to rejoice in, in the eternal life promised to us through Christ. Uh, the ashes remind us of our sinfulness uh, and our call to repentance. Uh, didn't Jesus say, repent and believe in the gospel? Uh, repent and believe in my salvation. Repentance is really such a joyous and glorious thing. I mean, it's sound, we often associate repentance with remorse. And that could be true. There's a place for that. Um, but we can confuse remorse with repentance. You know, so, oh, well, you know, I repent of X, Y, and Z because I'm crying and I'm mournful and I'm so filled with regret and shame. But then we keep doing what we've done and we go right back to it. And repentance isn't meant to just be a dark uh, black shroud of regret. Repentance is changing direction, moving in a new way, and being free of the things that bind us, that trip us up so easily. And, and even if it's a step-by-step, piece-by-piece thing, repentance is in its own way a doorway to joy and freedom. And Ash Wednesday reminds us of that. That's part of what the ashes are all about. Uh, Ash Wednesday is a ceremony. It's, it started um, in the year 1091, of all things. I have some notes here, that's why I'm looking down. Uh, Catholic Church. Uh, but it was a tradition that really did start in the early church. It had different forms. The acknowledging of Lent was present in the early church. We know that from early writings. Uh, it was associated more often with individuals who had been uh, exposed in their sinfulness for whatever the reason might be. And there was some ceremonies involved with being allowed back into the church. And Ash Wednesday kind of developed out of that. But it was in 1091 that uh, this pope made the declaration, Pope Urban, says, no, it's not only for the conspicuously sinful that Ash Wednesday applies. It's really for everyone, priests, bishops, men, women, everyone in the church ought to participate in the Ash Wednesday ceremony because we're all sinners. We're all saved by grace. We're all washed in the blood of Christ. None of us are exempt from the glories of the gift of salvation. And of course, it's carried on from there, and we celebrate it today. Um, curiously enough, because Ash Wednesday uh, is the beginning of Lent, the time of fasting and depriving ourselves of things, the day before Lent uh, often became a day of feasting, kind of eating extra stuff to pack ourselves up to get ready for Lent. And that's where Mar Mardi Gras comes from. 
and Carnival, uh, they're in overindulgent holidays uh, in a way to get us ready for Lent, which is kind of silly, but Mar Mardi Gras actually means Fat Tuesday. Did you ever hear of Fat Tuesday? That's Mardi Gras, and uh, that's the day before Ash Wednesday. But Ash Wednesday uh, is a holy day. It's a solemn ceremony. It's a solemn observance that is meant to remind us to meditate on our own mortality, if you will, our own frailty in preparation for the massive celebration of Jesus' gift to us on the cross. So that's Ash Wednesday. God bless you. Bye-bye. Voices from the Loft is a ministry of the Loft Wesleyan Church in Hillsboro, New Jersey. For more information about our church, please visit us at our website, www.theloftwc.org.